Hi there. Um, I'm going to take the next five minutes to try and convince you that we need alternatives for our meat production, and I will also uh, show an alternative. And in fact, I will um, sort of um, give the punchline already. Next year, I'm going to make a hamburger in the lab, the first hamburger ever. It's going to cost 250,000 euro, but it will be <laughs> highly uh, palatable. <laughs> anyway, um, so we are... Um, Currently um, eating a lot of meat, as is being said, and we are going to increase uh, the consumption of meat. So I'm going to convince you that we need alternatives. Um, and um, the, there are a number of reasons why we need alternatives. First of all, um, it's not sustainable the way we produce meat right now. Um, and it's basically because pigs and cows are very inefficient. They have not, never been designed to serve as our uh, food, and especially not for 9 billion people. So they're not really very efficient in converting vegetable proteins into animal proteins. Actually, it's a lousy 15%. So for every 15 grams of edible meat, we have to put in 100 grams of vegetable proteins. And right now, we are already using 70% of our, all our arable lands to um, produce the foods for these animals. That's all fine, uh, but the population is going to increase, and we're also going to increase consumption. And the World Health Organization has estimated that by 2050, meat consumption will double worldwide. So you can do the math. It's very easy. Not sustainable. <clears throat> so that's a, a pretty important reason. The second reason is that it's not very good for the environment either. Um, did you know that a vegetarian with a Hummer is actually much more uh, friendly to the environment than a meat eater on a bicycle. Um, so they are together responsible for 39% of our uh, methane emission, which, as you know, is a greenhouse gas. Then, of course, we have the animal welfare issues and the diseases, the zoonoses that come from intense herding of uh, animals. So there are lots of reasons to rethink the current uh, production of meat. Now, fortunately, the stem cell technology, and you've all heard about it and read about it in, um, in medical uh, applications, stem cell, stem cell technology allows us to harvest stem cells from the meat. All our muscle have lots of um, uh, stem cells. They are used to repair our muscle. Think uh, Arjan Robbe uh, at the um, uh, World Championship. And um, we can harvest these stem cells, they can multiply, we can grow a, a whole lot of them um, from one cell, we can get 10,000 tons of uh, uh, meat if we really push, it, uh, push the envelope. And then we can take them in the lab, grow them under very uh, controlled conditions, we can um, control all the variables and grow meat from that. These stem cells know how to make meat. That's their um, purpose in life. So uh, they make it actually quite easy for us in the lab. Of course, we need to feed these um, uh, cells as well. We need to still feed them fat, proteins, and sugars. But s since we can control all those variables, we probably can make it much more efficient than uh, the animal can. And we uh, can also play with those variables to perhaps make it more healthier. For instance, uh, make uh, basil meat. Um, another idea that um, came up actually here in Amsterdam was that we could use the, uh, the algae, the photosynthesis of the algae, and use the algae extract to feed the cells. And guess what? They thrive on it. So um, we can uh, change the, um, uh, the way we, we grow this meat. Of course, this meat in the lab is not working. It's not running, running around, so you can guess that it's sort of wasted. Um, so we need to condition it. Fortunately, um, these cells do much of that work by themselves. They like to perform labor, even in the lab. So um, by, by a certain conditioning of the uh, culturing, we can actually beef them up. Uh, we can also uh, electrically stimulate them, zap them if you, if you like. Um, they start to contract. It's living material, of course. It's just meat. And, um, uh, however, that boosts the protein synthesis a little bit, but not to the extent that we expected. So we are trying to steer away from uh, that. And, of course, it takes a lot of energy, too. 
Of course, you are going to say, well, meat is not only uh, muscle, there is um, uh, fat in it, which probably is important for the taste. Um, there is perhaps bone in it and bone marrow. That's all true. We can all make that. We can all engineer that. Has been done, has been described. In fact, we have done that ourselves. Um, so that's another addition that we can create in the lab. There's really no problem there. This is how it would look like. This is an artist's rendition, how you could uh, design this in a, in a factory. You have a, a pre-confirmation sort of, uh, uh, pre of how you grow uh, these, um, uh, these tissues, um, uh, easily packed, it's easily packable, and um, uh, then uh, we will eventually be able to eat meat um, without the, the uh, heavy uh, conscious um, uh, with regard to animal welfare, uh, environment, and uh, feeding the world population. And eventually you, um, um, you know, there are, of course, challenges. Are, are people going to accept it? I think they will. Um, imagine yourself, say, 20 years from now in the supermarket, you have the choice between these two products. One has this lab thing on it, this is our product, this is the animal product. Of course, they look exactly the same, they taste the same, have the same quality. Um, the top one may perhaps be a little bit healthier. It's the same price because this now has an eco-tax. Remember, it was not very good for the environment. Uh, and it also has a label that animals have suffered for this uh, product. So what are you going to choose? You know, it's, it will be a hard choice uh, eventually. Of course, we are not there yet. It's a sort of a scientific fantasy. We are we can produce this hamburger, uh, but we still need to work on uh, consumer acceptance and industrialization. That we haven't done yet, so um, it's um, still a concept. And then again, you might ask, you know, what are, what are we going to do with all these animals? Um, and I'm sure we can think of ways to um, uh, satisfy our need to just stay in contact with these, uh, these animals. And I'm sure this animal is happier here than on a barbecue. <laughs> uh, I thank you very much. <laughs>